Hey, what up, everybody? Uh, this is Stevie Breach coming to you today. Um, I know this this news came out yesterday, but I just wanted to make a video about the whole Daniel Bryan uh, now he needs Tommy John surgery. Um, at this point, you know, I, I'm a big Daniel Bryan fan. I think that WrestleMania 30 was definitely going to be one of the best wrestling trips, definitely going to be one of the best shows that I've ever been to. Um, that show from top to bottom, the emotion of Triple H, um, standing in Daniel Bryan's way and Bryan having to beat, you know, the CEO of the company, the guy that was trying to hold him down that wouldn't even, in storyline uh, role, give him a spot in the Royal Rumble to try and compete for that shot to go after the belts at WrestleMania. And then going through Batista and uh, Randy Orton as well as having yeah, Triple H running around ringside. Um, you know, it just was an awesome story uh, with an awesome wrestler that a whole bunch of people were really behind. Um, you know, so many times that once somebody finally gets that spot of, of, of reaching the top, uh, WWE has just sort of messed around with them so much and uh, either shoved them down our throats or, uh, you know, just, just wore them out to the point where people are turning on them before they even get the belt. And Brian wins the belt, confetti's flying everywhere, I'm hugging people, and um, it's just going to be all, always going to be one of the best wrestling moments, if not the best, uh, that I've ever seen live. Uh, I mean, just really awesome. Daniel Bryan, you know, he lives sort of a more easy style of life. You know, I'm sure that he doesn't drive the nicest car in the world. He doesn't need to have the biggest house in the world. Um, his wife, from just getting married, Brie Bella, yeah, seems to live that simple side of life as well. I think that when when uh, she gets around Nikki, I think she can, you know, turn it up to 10. But I don't really see them as people that really just, you know, blow through and fly through money. Uh, like crazy. I'm wondering if Daniel Bryan is ever even going to come back to wrestling. If you think that, you know, he had to have this neck surgery, which ended up being you know, him stripped of the WWE Championship. After that, they're telling him that, you know, he's got nerve damage in his arm, and that's why he can't, you know, uh, sort of move things around, and he's, he's, he isn't regaining strength in, in that arm. Now, all of a sudden, comes out and he needs Tommy John surgery. I, I've never heard about you know a normal athlete getting Tommy John surgery. Whenever I hear about Tommy John surgery, it's always um, you know mostly pitchers in baseball, and um, <coughs> when they get this surgery, they don't even get to pick up a baseball for a year before they even get to start their comeback. It's basically a 365 day you know rest period before you're even you know thinking about trying to get ready to get in shape to play in the big leagues again, and. Um, I'm not sure what that would be for a professional wrestler, but you know Daniel Bryan, uh, you know he lived his life, you know doing the indie circuit. He's not no spring chicken. You got to wonder if you know we are ever really going to see Daniel Bryan. Uh, when I listened to the Mick Foley interview on um, uh, the Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, Unleashed show, it was on part two. Uh, Mick Foley tells a story. He never really gives a time period about it, but basically he he talks about a time. When Daniel Bryan wanted to walk away from wrestling, because basically wrestling wasn't working out for him, um, to the point where he did, he wasn't where he thought he should be, and um, he just was you know fed up and, and fully talked to you know Daniel Bryan. I'm not sure he was the one voice that got in his ear that told him to stay, but fully tells him you know why don't you you know stay in this and you know work to get to the uh, a little bit higher on the card, and then when you actually do walk away, it's gonna mean more. And, um, it, you know, you can definitely look at WWE's roster right now. Um, they're running the rematch of Brock Lesnar versus John Cena right out of the gates at Night of Champions. I think that, honestly, if you didn't do that match with Brock Lesnar as champion, um, I'm not the best booker in the world. I do like to play, you know, fantasy booker every once in a while, but I can't really think of what else is out there. I know that Sheamus is a big baby face. Maybe you could do Sheamus versus Lesnar if that had to be. Um, you know, Big Show is a guy that they like to put in that main event role, but that's one that fans are going to turn on before the match even starts. Um, Mark Henry's another guy. Um, that's not going to be that great of a match either. I mean, there are some people out there, but there's no real dream matches out there. I mean, CM Punk is sitting at home on his couch um, with Brian's injury. There's a huge hole in WWE's roster. Also on that show, Mick Foley talks about, you know, he, he he was told by Vince McMahon that he had had his last match, and the only reason why he kept wrestling after 1999 was because of Stone Cold Steve Austin's injury, uh, and that left a big gaping hole, and that's when Vince uh, called them up and, and told them that they were going to need him to work a little bit longer, which led into the uh, Mick Foley uh, versus uh, Triple H feud, um, which was right before WrestleMania 16, and then, of course, 
They had another hole they needed, and then Foley came back for the main event of WrestleMania because it was the main event of Mania. But um, back to Brian, uh, I just I'm at the point now where if he comes back, he comes back. I know that there's this mystery sort of date floating around out there that maybe he'll be ready for the Rumble. Um, as of right now, I just don't see how that's possible, especially with Tommy John surgery and everything else that's going on. Um, even on top of that, you got to wonder, you know, what the response for Brian is going to be. I know that there's a lot of people who really like Brian, but I mean, is that the guy that we really want to be pushing towards the main event of WrestleMania again? Um, is that sort of like the, the fans uh, want to get behind him? Um, I'm excited to see him come back and wrestle if he is. I think it is definitely going to be one hell of a story to see somebody come back from something like this. Normally, you hear of somebody getting injured, you know, they get surgery, they get better, and they come back. Uh, with professional wrestling, I can't think of anybody who's had surgery, found out the surgery didn't work, have to go back in and get yet another surgery, and then find out they're screwed again and have to work harder. It just seems like, you know, they have to keep on, you know, climbing that hill, and then once you get to the top of the hill, you look at, you know, where you're going from there, and there's another hill up ahead. It just sucks. Uh, but if anybody can do it, it's Brian. I think he's overcome so much as it is. I think that when people saw him get it signed by WWE, uh, and he came in through NXT when he beat The Miz for the United States Championship. I think a lot of people thought that that was going to be it. I mean, uh, you know, basically he was going to be that mid-card United States short champion that Vince McMahon didn't know how good he was. And, um, you know, if anybody can get back, it's going to be him. I'm, I'm cheering for him. I'm rooting for him. But at the point now, it's just like, how much is, how much is it going to take for him just to say, fuck it, I'm done?